So, what if I told you this was our finished exhaust system for the S10 V8 swap project over here? And uh, this is, that's it. Basically, you have the headers and then it goes down. We have our collectors, some pipe, and uh, that's the exit. What's going on guys? So, we're back on the S10 V8 swap project. I haven't been away from it. But it's been a minute since I've got a video posted because I've been doing a lot of work to this. I'm kind of at a halfway point and I figured it was a good time to jump in and start showing you guys some of the progress. We're going to get back to that crazy exhaust situation going on. But first, there's some bigger things going on up front that I really got to cover and show you guys before it starts to get covered and buried. So let's jump into it. Okay guys, so let's jump into what's going on up here. Um, we have front accessories on here now. These are actually all the ones off of the 4.3 motor that we took out of here. And uh, they've been cleaned and I just did a quick paint job and just tried to, trying to keep everything looking real nice in here. I also, I think I got most of the wiring done. Um, I didn't really cover that in the last video I did. I meant to, but plans kind of changed, and I there's so much. It's not that bad, but there's it was too much to cover in that video, so I actually I'm going to have one completely dedicated to just the wiring to try to help you guys out because it was it would have been nice if I had something like that uh, when I was trying to figure all this out. So I will have a link to that video in the description if you want to check that out if you're trying to do something like this. Now the biggest thing is what's going on right in front of us right here. So the core support is back in and it's actually starting to look like a normal truck again, sort of. Uh, it's a little weird looking, but it's actually, you know, not just like its guts are spewed out. Um, we have a radiator in here now. We got to talk about that. This is a 89-ish. Corvette radiator, but this is a aftermarket take on it. That's more or less for these swaps the way that it was advertised. It's a little shorter and a little more um, not as wide. So as you see, once I got my accessories on here, I lost just a lot of space. So I had to switch it up and go to, the, I found this, it was relatively cheap. I'm not going to put a link to it. It's what I call like a, a Wahoo brand. It's one of those things where like everyone on Amazon kind of has their own version of it. It's from overseas. So, and you always see like funky brands and everyone makes their own take of it. But it is a three core radiator. They had four core as well. I did the three because I, I was worried. I didn't want it to be any thicker because it's, you see what's happening here. So it should, even though it's we lost a little bit of size, it should be more efficient. It would have been nice to use the S10 radiator, but it would have been taller and wider, and I would have had to just completely, just like annihilate this thing. I did have to trim out, because it's inside, the point of getting this is that it's inside the core support. And uh, I still had to do a little bit of trimming, uh, but it's it's pretty minor compared to what I would have to do if I use the S10 radiator. So, it fitment's actually pretty good. Besides the fact that we don't have any fans. So, it actually came with this nice shroud on it with two fans mounted on the backside like you would normally have it. Um, the whole radiator is actually was really nicely made. So, I'm, I have high hopes for it. But we had to move the fans around, so let's go back. So I had to take the shroud off, thinking I could just mount the fans right to the radiator, and even that was just going to be too close. So we basically moved up front here. The, it had two 12-inch fans, and it actually worked out really well because they fit almost perfectly in here. So this one, I kind of had to bend up the this kind of like goofy power steering cooler too. And 
this one, I'll since that one's mounted down low, maybe I'll mount this one up high. And uh, that way I make sure we're getting all of the fins top to bottom are getting some airflow over them. So, and then these are swapped around where they blow air that way now. I, I also have, supposedly have the wiring figured out for the fans so we can run them off the stock computer. And this is really cool because everything is gonna work just the way it's supposed to. There's there's no like switch I need to hit to turn the fans on. It's just gonna be like a, a stock car, like you just bought it and everything just works the way it's supposed to. So, you know, fingers crossed, that's, that's the dream of doing this. And uh, it's more time consuming, but it should be pretty cool when it's all done. And, uh, the fact that when you shut the hood, you're not, you know, people aren't really going to realize, you know, it's, it's a cool idea. I'm excited about it. Okay. And then now back to this funky little exhaust pipes that I got going on. So basically to explain that, if you haven't noticed, I still have the body is uh, lifted up right now. So I'm pretty much at the point of everything that I can do because having that up, giving me that extra space, I've gotten all of that stuff done. Um, like getting this core support on, that was those the way that frame sticks up. It's, it's a lot easier to do that like this than when it was down. And uh, among other things, the exhaust. Because with that body being up, I just, I have more room to get to the uh the headers and stuff but i had to get the exhaust figured out and then i can drop the body and then we can finish everything else pretty much one of my last videos i talked about just trying to make the stock exhaust work in the meantime there's just such a huge um size difference here we go there's there's the uh, comparison i would have to adapt it down and then the headers do come out at a little bit different angles. It was just, it was gonna be a pain for something that I know I'm gonna replace. But I have to have something because we need O2 sensors. We have to have the O2 sensors before we can start this because it needs to know what's going on so it can run right. Instead of doing the extra work for something that's just gonna be cut off, I made up these little things. These are my collectors that came with the headers. I basically just got some cheap pipe of the same size, got it just long enough to where it's gonna come down past the transmission and the frame and everything. Most importantly, we can put some sensors in. It's just so we can get the motor broken, drive it around, but uh, it's gonna be loud. It is, it's gonna be really loud. So it'd be, <laughs> If you guys haven't already, consider hitting that thumbs up button down there. It helps the channel out a ton. Uh, but I'm gonna get this body, well I'm gonna get those little exhaust pieces on so I can finally drop this body down, hopefully for good. And uh, then I, that opens up a whole new gateway of stuff I can get done. And uh, I'm gonna get some of that stuff knocked out and then I'm gonna catch up with you. Okay, let's get this sucker down where it's supposed to be. stuff happening. Okay. All four blocks are out. Come on, baby, go right down where you're supposed to.
nice. Looks really, really close. Boom. I think we're in business. Oh man, that looks so much better. Okay guys, so I just came back out here for today. While the garage is warming up right now, we're gonna do some catch up on what I got done since the body's been dropped now. Okay, so all the body mounts are in now. They pretty much lined right up. I did just have to give it a little kind of shimmy uh, to get the two front ones in. But it pretty much dropped right back to where it's supposed to be. So that was cool. And then in here, I've been doing plumbing, plumbing, and more plumbing. So let me show you what all I've done in here. So I've been working on everything in here from coolant lines to heater lines to coolant lines that are gonna go to an oil cooler we got to cover that um, the lines that come from the oil cooler because we don't have one in the radiator anymore because we have this aftermarket one the lines that go to the remote oil filter to start that whole process um, power steering lines power steering cooler lines um, we have transmission lines, transmission cooler lines. Um, I'm going to have a remote transmission cooler up here as well with a thermostat. I had to come up with an adapter to make these weird fittings that was on this radiator hook up to all of this. And I'm sure there's probably some, a couple other things I missed. So. Lots of lots of hoses and connections and fluids and just, it goes on and on. So our journey pretty much starts with the remote oil filter. If you remember, I had my adapter with my adapter to get the hoses from the location on the block to these hoses. And that's gonna hook to the remote oil filter that's under the, uh, the grill area, core support. So I did manage to keep the stock, this guy in place here. I did have to, of course, modify it because everything seems like I've had to modify it. And it had to move forward because now our engine is forward so much. Those lines are set up to go into there. And then we still have our oil cooler, like output lines that's built into this. So if you notice those were cut off, that's because I'm still gonna be using those. I could have just looped them and just skip that part but i do want to retain the oil cooler because i feel like we're going to use this to tow and rag on it and everything else it's just an extra layer of uh keeping everything where it should be so i found one of these uh, i had to do some searching this is actually a used part out of a ford fusion uh, you can find these in some ford vehicles it's basically just a liquid to liquid cooler i think they were using it as a transmission cooler this is one of the few ones I could find that was more universal to where I could just slip tubing on either side of it. I'm gonna use this as my oil cooler. So I'll route those oil lines to these guys here. And then I still need to run coolant to this for it to do its job. And that's gonna come from this bypass tube right here. So I'm gonna route, those are gonna come down, go in and go out there and then just go back to where they need to go. And that's gonna give me the coolant flow through there. So that way the oil and the coolant can be like equalized with each other to help keep the oil from overheating and uh, just get everything to that nice steady, like 200 degrees that most of the oil and everything likes to be at. And then while we're over here, I still have to hook up my power steering lines. I am gonna be adding a filter in line of that while I'm at it. Um, you know, just mashing more stuff in here that I don't have room for. And that pretty much sums up this side. And then on to our passenger side. So pretty conventional. We have our in radiator cooler that I'm figured out the fittings and stuff to get to make that work. Um, I am adding a small little like external cooler up here. I had to find a spot for it now with our fans and stuff. Uh, and then that's going to be on a thermostat. So it basically only uses that if it has to, if not, it'll just cycle through here. So that way 
same thing kind of like with the oil cooler we don't want the fluid to be too cold um, but this will help kind of be like an emergency backup in case it gets hotter than what this can handle so it's kind of how the larger trucks are set up uh, so we be set on all of our fluid control stuff so like I said earlier we have our Wahoo Amazon radiator it came with its own Wahoo fans and we still need to hook those up we know the activation pins on our computer we have to make those connections so I went back on Amazon and I got some Wahoo relays because this is a budget build. We gotta save that money where we can. These are kind of neat, actually. The uh, the fuses, you know, you have to have a, a fuse to keep everything from melting down. You can put the fuses, they're actually like part of the relays, so it's all right there. Uh, so that's kind of cool. But I'm, I found a spot. <laughs> Real estate is really limited in here at this point, so things are getting tight. I managed to find one sneaky spot that I can put them right there. There's already a hole, so I can use like a push pin. And uh, that keeps them right where they need to be because the battery is right there. Our activation pins are right there. And we'll run our wires right around for our fans right through here somewhere. Okay, guys. So I have some of the wire. Actually, I have most of the wiring done for uh, the fans up here. It still needs kind of tidied up. But I have it just everything kind of in place. Uh, still got to do some heat shrinking. Everything's connected except for the triggers for the computer. And that's because I want to do a little bit of testing here. And I need to make sure that's working before we get this running and I overheat a brand new engine. Alrighty, so I got my uh, little test lead guy on here. I love these little things. Um, I got it just hooked to a bolt so it's grounded because the computer pins are grounded and so that's how this is technically going to activate. And then we're going to see if these fans turn on the way they're supposed to. And that's a great start because nothing's happening. Gotta double check we got a connection. No, we don't. That's probably the problem. Hey! <laughs> okay, <laughs> we we got a connection now. Let's try that again. Okay, low fan. Should be the driver's side. Uh, right side. Sweet, okay. Okay, let's try the other one. Should be left side. You gotta rev it up just to make sure it's working. Sweet. So that is, that should pretty much be all of the wiring for this. I, I don't think there's, it, knock on something, anything left. So all of the basic engine stuff is done. Now we have like our air intake and stuff. We gotta get on here just to plug some stuff in, but it's all there. So we might have to maybe uh, extend a wire or something which is whatever we can do that uh, but everything's there all of the conversion stuff's done uh, I'm also uh, I, I am running out of real estate I've got to figure out if I can fit a catch can somewhere I'm assuming in this area this is just becoming a how much stuff can I just mash in this already cramped area it's it's all for the like greater good, but it is, <laughs> it's getting, it's just tight. It is really tight in here. So I just have some little things I got to get done here. 
I gotta hook up all that plumbing stuff. I have some miscellaneous things to do, like that valve, figure out where I'm putting a catch can. Um, I need an oil cap. Uh, just like, some of it's just like silly little stuff. I might need to make sure my hood still fits. I don't like the way um, that's sticking up. That's, that's, we're worried about that after. Uh, fluids, I gotta fill everything up, literally. Every, trans engine power steering you name it everything needs filled back up so a lot of little stuff and then i think we're ready i think we're ready for a first startup so i think that we're right around the corner from that so hopefully uh so that's it for now though and i'll catch up with you on all that stuff and we'll see if this baby fires up so thanks for hanging out and i'll see you the next one